All right. Hey, we should probably get started. I'm going to paste the Etherpad in Pound Sumo. Um, and it looks like the webcast thing is actually working today. So hello, we are webcasting. Hello. Oh, you, we're streaming live? We are Woo streaming live. So that... Oh, we should put that in Pound Sumo so people could try check it out. Okay. Well, the link's here. It's on the copy. Hello, copy link location. Oh, is it? Yeah, you might as well put it in too. You're right. It's in the Etherpad, right? But yeah, hold on. Is... I mean, I didn't double check that it's actually streaming, but we have the little red light and the do 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 <laughs> icon, so I assume it's working. Um, okay, and I'm recording it to upload to YouTube, so we're doing all of that. So hello, it is <laughs> the Sumo platform meeting. And we have an Etherpad, and I just posted it in Pound Sumo. And um, if you want to add some stuff to this list, please add stuff to this list. These are the things that I thought of, the stuff in pink there. So um, I'm traveling and doing training or something the next two meetings. So I won't be here for the next two meetings. So I need somebody to do these meetings for the next two meetings. Um, I can do August the 8th. I can't do August the 1st. Yeah, no problem. I can take that. Okay. So, Kadir the 1st, Roland the 8th. Okay. Great. Yes, I'll be doing it from Toronto on the 8th. Okay. Awesome. So... Yep. Um, so, you know, make an ether pad... Yeah. Send out a reminder. That's right. So that Kadir, only... actually, this is a reminder for myself because Kadir actually is organized. We need to put out oh. our Etherpad on at least three business days in advance. I'll make the next Etherpad. When oh, I... Kadir, you're saved. At the end okay, of then this... I'll create the August 8th one right, right after. <laughs> at the end of this, <laughs> actually, it'll be Kadir. So this is what I always do is at the end of the meeting, I try to fill in any notes if I can. Um, and, mm -hmm. then, and then I add it to that wiki page where there's the whole list of meetings i'll send you a link yeah. and then i create the new etherpad at the same time and i copy over the last etherpad and delete stuff we should automate that you would think <laughs> Put that no, on the you'll, spend, you'll spend three weeks programming a script that just yes. barely works you're just better off copy and paste <laughs> no, we, we should automate unless you're that. ricky let's put then that on the roadmap yes okay um, I linked to a bug here. I want to say Matt sent me an email this morning saying he commented in there, but I hadn't read Search it yet. Search facets. Search facets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, he did actually. Okay. So, oh, I see you closed it as works for me. So I, without reading the thing, what happened? So, well, actually Matt gave a pretty good answer to that. Uh, what, what they're doing is, um, so, so, do you want to give a uh, Michael? Do you want to give right? Okay, so here was the, what the here issue? was the issue. I was looking at our search facets, and I noticed that when I do a search, you know, it says like uh, Firefox, Firefox for Android, whatever, and it has all these different numbers next to them. And then if I click on one of those facets, the numbers change. And if I click on a different facet, they change again. And so no matter what I click on. They're all different numbers, and they'll say things like zero. But if I click on the thing that says zero, then all of a sudden there are things in that. And it was totally opaque to me, made no sense at all. Mm -hmm. But that's apparently so that was working good... as designed. Yeah, there was a good explanation from, from Matt, who says that this is actually the default, like this is how it's usually done, which is um, an OR search. Uh, so. What, what is happening is you click on Firefox and you see these uh, like um, zero results for Firefox OS in the faceted search bar. That means there are zero articles that are in Firefox and Firefox OS. So if you click on Firefox OS, you get all the articles that are for Firefox OS at this time. So when you, when, when you, when you see the list then, it will show zero for Firefox because there are zero articles in Firefox OS that they have in common with Firefox. Does it make sense? Yeah, but I to me, 
no one would understand that unless you were a search guy. Or I'll just say I was using the other day the Harvard what? Business Review website, and their search facets do not work like that. They have numbers that stay consistent when you click on them. And it made total well, sense. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's 100 articles here. And I clicked on it, and there's 100 things. And they say there's 200 here, and I click on it, and there's 200 things. And those numbers don't change. Right. So actually, what we could do is instead we could get rid of the numbers, uh, because I was also thinking about like that. Do, does this actually make sense? Like 1,300 articles or items for Firefox, because we are taking the forum into account. So, and, and how does it even make sense to show people numbers? Like, what do they get from seeing the numbers, other than if it wasn't well zero? Um, right, because the zero makes me think there's almost, nothing there. Yeah, exactly. But if you don't show them that, then it doesn't matter because it will never be. It will almost never be zero, right? Because when we search, we also search in the forum, so almost always you will also have something in the other products. Um, so, and I was thinking about this, and actually, I couldn't come up with a good reason to have numbers in there with with the, with the forum included. If it was only the KB, maybe yes. But with the form included, um, I couldn't come up with a good reason. So, yeah, anyone else? I can't think out loud on this one. I'd actually have to research the book. To me, the numbers aren't bad to have. They're nice to have. Like I, when I was using them on another website, I was like, oh, interesting. There's lots here, or there's nothing. I'll try another search or something. But um, to me, the numbers that we have are confusing as heck. I, I agree. Like, if the if if popular websites don't use the numbers like we are, and, and the people are being confused because our search fastening mean, isn't like popular websites, then we're gonna have to change it. I don't know about popular websites. I honestly only looked at one other website because it came up and I was like, wait, I was just using this feature somewhere else and it worked a totally different way and I'm totally confused about how it works on our website. But I didn't do a systematic looking at other websites. Well, uh, so Matt is the search um, champion. Uh, we should also have his opinion on this. Yeah. Um, Just I mean, get Matt to look at it. We can all look at it. And well, he, chime, he chimed in on the bug. Yeah, he was out. So, so he was for actually leaving it as it is. Um, that's when I closed it. Um, he says, I would not be terribly upset, though, if you insisted on changing the behavior. Right. So. All right. Uh, we could also uh, get Michael or Will to comment on like how difficult that will be. Removing the numbers shouldn't be difficult, but keeping yeah, the numbers consistent or whatever would be a whole different thing, right? Probably. Well, that will essentially be doing uh, an R search, like uh, Matt says. Essentially, what we are doing right now is we are showing them uh, the end results, like. The, the results with Firefox and Firefox OS, that's zero. But then when people click through, we don't do an and search. We just search for Firefox OS. And then you get more results because there are more than zero articles for Firefox OS. There are just zero articles for Firefox and Firefox OS. So yeah, I understand where the confusion comes from. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, so in in that case, but we shouldn't then probably uh, we shouldn't change how the search works. We should change how the uh, numbering works because that's not something that Matt commented on. Right. So usually, when you do uh, faceting, what you want to do is normally you have already selected something like you have already selected topic one, and now you want to see things that are also in topic two. Topic one and topic two, or maybe that's not the usual case, but that's one case of doing it. Um, so you want to filter further. 
and then it makes sense, right? Because then uh, you, you actually want to have that filtered and you want to have it say zero if there are zero articles in category one right. and two. So but, so, but you could argue that in our search, that doesn't make much sense for products. Uh, it, may, it might make sense for topics, but it doesn't make sense for products. Right. Because here, if you actually, I'm, yes, I'm I gonna, see that argument. I'm going to paste this into so you can do the same search that I'm doing. So I just put on the on that line about search facets, right? So this is the search I just did. I just typed in Flash, right? So the default is all products. It says there's 791 things for Firefox, 45 things for Android, nine things for Firefox OS. So I think to myself, okay, this is all products, and I say, oh, I just want to see right now, let's say, I want to see the things that are for Firefox. So if I click on that, right, what it tells me, all of a sudden, there are no more things for Android and there are no more things for Firefox OS. And I'm like, wait, you just said there was 45 and 9. And then if I click on one of those, all of a sudden, like there are 45 things for Android. You just told me there was zero a second ago. And there's still zero for Firefox OS. But if I click on it, it's going to say 9. See, and then I'm like, and it tells me there's zero for Firefox, and I'm like, there was just 700 things, mm -hmm. and to me that's just totally, I don't know. I think a lot of people would see it that way. It would be. Let's take let's take the numbers off. <laughs> I'll make that case with Matt. I'll talk to Matt and and see. I don't know. I don't. It doesn't seem like go... there's a lot of feeling one way or the other from everybody here not really so it yeah if you can discuss that with matt uh, yeah okay i actually like the idea of either way the numbers yeah <laughs> all right anything else about about facets <laughs> that was just one of my things that came up this week what's next Okay, so here's here's uh, one. We had a tiny sort of uh, conversation about this in email, although not specifically about Firefox OS. We have talked about this earlier this year, but this affects Firefox OS and Android. Um, and and that is so we don't really we don't have any way on Sumo to detect which version of Firefox OS you have or which version of Android you have, and so sometimes. The well, we know in Android there's a few differences in instructions. Um, I guess we know in in Firefox OS there's there's already some differences between one one o one and one point one. I assume there'll be more differences uh, uh, soon. So um, we've talked about this before. It seems like there's there's a there's good reasons and strong support for removing not having that information in the ua string so it, that seems like that's probably <laughs> that would be a really hard fight to like say we got to have this or whatever and as somebody pointed out maybe it was tyler in email yesterday that um maybe there's impetus to get away from that even on desktop which then would change like how our desktop support works so yeah. that would be that would be hard. So the thing is, yeah. personally, this is me. I think the the way that, that our show for idea on Sumo, being able to show the support for a particular version is one of those things that I think delights people. It's one of the coolest parts about the way our articles work. When I show this feature off to other people, they're like, that's freaking magic. How can we have that on our support site? I can't believe you guys can actually do that. That's amazing. They're always, people are always super excited about that. So they're like, they don't want to talk about anything else. Oh yeah, you guys localize that in like 80 <laughs> languages? Yeah, whatever. How does that thing work where it switches between Mac and Windows? That's what, you know? So, um, what if this didn't have to work off the UA string? Yeah. We, we already collect this other places, like we collect this in About Support, we collect this in the Firefox Health Report. Um, what if we, we, 
we st stated the problem like this. On our websites, on our Mozilla properties, because we do this with marketing, right? If you go to the, if you show up at the uh, mozilla.org pages with Windows, you see screenshots of things in Windows. If you show up with a Mac, you see Mac screenshots. We're sniffing the UA to do that. But what if we said on our Mozilla properties, we need a way to be able to help people. We need a way to be able to show them, you know, images that match what they're using. We need to be able to show them help that matches what they're using. Um, so maybe there are these pieces of the information that we're collecting in Firefox Health Report that we could use maybe even without a user opt-in only on Mozilla sites or something. I don't know. There, yeah, actually, I would have to look into that because uh, we did that for the about support information when we uh, got a uh, add-on um, to include that information in the uh, in the ask a question process. The idea was uh, to uh, further in integrate that into Firefox so that it would be shipped by default. Um, already today, when you install the add-on, we don't ask you for permission or anything. We right. just ask you to install the add-on so we can get the information. But there is no, no uh, other step involved in getting the data out. We just have access to it. Um, so also, that's very basic information. There is no history or nothing personally identifiable in there. So um, I guess that's also why it's not much of, a, much of an issue. Um, but it would be great to, is anyone from the user uh, advocacy team on, on the call? If they are, um, I can't see not. them. Yeah, okay. Uh, Tyler would be the right person to talk to about this, actually. So we can do that. Uh, I can talk to Tyler and see where, uh, how far that has uh, proceeded already, because he, he started doing that. He was advocating for including that. There's an open bug about the, that. The API. Oh, you already found the bug? Okay. I know it's under like the last thing I, if I try to remember was maybe there's a security review needed or something like that. And I asked Matt about it maybe three or four weeks ago. And he was like, oh, yeah, we probably need to push on that some more or something. But we haven't had a one on one in a while. And I forgot to ask him about pushing on that for a while. So, so the, the post solution is an API that's inter interrogated by um, Mozilla websites. Oh, that's used by Mozilla websites. Yeah, for about support. Yeah, I like that solution. Um, the other thing was that uh, other solution that was proposed was if for in the mobile case, if people could touch some sort of UX, if they had some way of indicating via touch which interface they're run, which version of Android or Firefox OS they were running, like show a picture or something that's relevant to specific versions. But that's just as problematic as the text selector that we just removed. So I don't know, but I mean, we could do research on both the API and the UX if we have the go ahead from people. Like open a research bug if, if that's what's required. Well, it might be a good idea because we don't know whether the API is going to land or not, and we will need a solution, some, some, some sort of solution. Another uh, solution might be to actually use the links that we are getting. Um, so, you know, we have in-product links, and most, uh, I, I would assume that especially on, on mobile, we would have to check that. I haven't checked that specifically for mobile, but I can imagine that a lot of those people actually come from in-product links. Today, even on desktop, that's one-third of our users coming from uh, in-product links. Uh, so it might be actually, uh, it might be useful to look into that because if they come from in-product, they come with a specific URL that also has the operating system uh, encoded. So we could uh, redirect them in a way that we add a parameter that also give us, gives us their uh, operating system. So at least for those, we would be able to show uh, operating system specific would, uh, that, pages. would that be true in Firefox OS if it's all HTML based? Because that's where we don't use those kind of links. We well, don't. yeah, uh, they also use links. Uh, let me look into that. Actually, I think I had already filed a bug for that. Uh, I have to look into that again. But I, I already uh, asked the team to use um, these specific links, not not hard coded links, but the links that have the language operating system. And uh, operating system version, I think it is, uh, or 
last version. Well, Ricky would know better, uh, but I think there are three or four parameters that we usually get from in product names. Ricky, do you remember? Uh, what's that? The those sorry. in product links. Those in product redirect things that we use. Yes. Those always so have the they... operating system and whatnot in them. Oh. Or I mean, you can include the uh, I think the platform or something if you want. Yeah. Hmm. I, mean, I don't think it's... we use it much, but it sounds like we need an Etherpad <laughs> and then some yeah. research bugs. Well, I'm pretty sure that we have this already documented somewhere, Ricky. Uh, I think you you even wrote this, but I can't remember quite remember where that was. I think I wrote it based on something that James oh, you wrote. wrote Let me see if I have it in my awesome box. Okay. Um, I have an Etherpad. We could use that one to put our latest info in, or we could start a new one. No. So in any case, we haven't been really using that because we are getting the operating system from the uh, um, user agent. So there is no need to use the uh, in-product URL, also because you only get the referrer once, right? Um, and then on, on, on when you proceed, it's not there anymore. So we would have to do something about that. Um, I volunteered to do an Etherpad if someone gives me a link to the API bugs, the existing API uh, work that we've done or research that we've done. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have the bug. Uh, I have to either find Michael, who, who looked at it recently, or Tyler, who probably filed it. This is our in product Yay. Uh, documentation. Okay. See, it's so awesome that we have a standard format because no other team has it, except maybe uh, Android. But they don't do it from a user point of view. But um, oh wait, this is not the documentation on that, Kadir. This is our project about what people do with these links. Oh. How about we do the action item that you guys send me the links for existing? What do we call this? Customized support based on Firefox OS and Android version and I will gather it into a etherpad and we can the three of us Kadir myself and Michael can collaborate on bugs to file if need be but so if I understand you though hold on so if I understand Kadir right that would only solve the case where people are coming from uh, in an in product link where we could say oh they want to see this version of the instructions it doesn't solve the problem if they come from Google or they come from somewhere else if they just right. show up on uh, the site. Yeah, yeah. No, th this is just for this would just be good for in product links. It would be hopefully right. So on desktop it's already one third, uh, where using a search engine is normal. Hopefully it will be more on, on uh, mobile. I actually didn't check Google Analytics to see how many people uh, what the sources are for mobile usage. Uh, I just have the aggregates uh, so in mind right now. In, in mobile, but, we don't have a whole. The I think the only the big like in product links we have are like in the sync setup, um, and then other than that, oh. they're really hidden. Like way down, you have to go to settings and then open about page and then click to support. Like it's they're not they're yeah. not very findable. Just that one, just that one sync things. Unless I'm missing some, do you is there? Even on Firefox OS, right? There, it's still like you have to go into the settings and go to the user guide, or you have to go to about in the browser and then click a link to support. There's no like real direct link. Yeah, so I don't actually know what what the percentage of in product users is on mobile, but in any case, we would only help them uh, with the solution, and we would still need another solution for people coming from Google or coming from other sites, right. uh, from other parts. So yeah, this would be helpful, but only for a minority of users or for a portion of our users. Or anybody coming from a Mozilla site, we could append those parameters. No, uh, because people coming from Mozilla sites, they essentially, we don't, I mean, they are, it doesn't matter whether they come from Mozilla sites or from other oh, sites, okay. because we only get to refer that they come from Mozilla. And on the Mozilla site, you don't know where they come from. Right? They could have used the search engine to go to Mozilla.org. Oh, okay. or, or I guess that's what I was referring to. From Mozilla sites, we could insert 
a JavaScript hack that would, again, which doesn't exist, but. Uh, well, the issue is that JavaScript can't access any operating system information. That's the, that's the, so otherwise uh, we could do that too. There is just no way. There is, like, from the browser itself, you can't get the information of what the operating system is. It's just no way. Um, I think for the only um, way for Firefox OS, I think actually device type is more important than this. You mean ZTE uh, open the, model number version? Well, the OS version is not as important as what device you're using. Because the carrier uh, can I, change I, it too at some point, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, and they also make changes before. Um, you know, I mean, we have this whole chain of, you know, the carrier plus the OEM plus Qualcomm out ahead of us. So I think um, while, yes, there will be deltas between each version of a Firefox OS that we ship, um, I think just figuring out what device you're using, <laughs> who, what's the manufacturer is actually bigger fish to fry in, in our in the from the user perspective like that's what people always want to tell us um for android this is how ever, all the forums are split up for all the android for, forums around the world is by device what device are you using that's always the first thing yep. so mm -hmm. so the the about support type thing that would solve that problem wouldn't it would that tell yeah. us what device if you get that it should yeah. right Actually, I, don't know. I would I would hope so I would hope I that we I'm not sure if that information is so actually I was just talking about Firefox for mobile uh, where we do have that kind of information I actually don't even know if there is an about support page on Firefox uh, OS I don't is think there? there is no but there is an Android right I mean we could have it on Firefox OS it would just means somebody right. would have to build it but right yeah no th th but then it's it's like more steps it's First, you have to have the about support side, and then you have to build the API to access it, and then you have to. Well, I, I get mean, people to actually implement that. I mean, is Firefox Health Report is that a plan to eventually come to to Firefox OS? I would think so. I don't know. Uh, uh, not one that day? I'm aware of. Okay. Well, maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> but yeah, they Five have. Years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I I um I lurk on the FHR channel. They have no plans, uh, because there's so many other things to do. So they want to do things, it. There's just so yeah, many other things to do. That's like such a. Um, so. So yeah, you're right, Michelle. The actually knowing which device basically tells us which operating system because most people don't upgrade. Maybe it's it does an Android for Android anyways. too, right? Like that's all yeah. we ever ask people on the forum for Android too as well. Tell me what device you're using. <laughs> what weird Android device are you using? Are you using a fancy new one, right? People don't right. all generally know that they're using something called Jelly Bean or Ice Cream Sandwich or whatever, but we can mm -hmm. figure that out from that device. So I think if we solve that problem, we solve more problems, you know, than yeah, you can. Is that, yeah. About what is support. that? I see my device under the graphics uh, yeah. section of about support on the on the on Android. Right. Oh so yeah, has, yeah. On Android. Yeah, under adapter description, it lists the device, what device you have. Oh, okay. The device name. Yep. All right. Perfect. Oh, well, that's good. The other thing that was rolling around while you're in my head while you're talking is you know the app. Um, I think we have Ricky as an intern working on an app for support for Firefox OS. So maybe there's Yay. something we could do there that it knows what version it's installed on. I don't know. Well, Ricky can uh, say more about that, but that's actually, you mean the offline uh, Sumo? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I still have to see that. Uh, I'm waiting for that to be. Uh, Put online. Uh, I think uh, Michael Cooper wants you to do that. Put that online. Um, Scott, I haven't seen that yet. But um, what did you say, Ricky? You so I, 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 I've asked Kadir and Ebay like who has to go to a demo, like so we can schedule a demo as soon as possible to see what the thoughts are. 
but didn't Michael also want to put that uh, up online so we can play with it? Well, I think we should just have it now. Um, the, it's harder to get it online because we'd have to um, make changes to Sumo and production. Uh, so, I but, but go. first, Include first me. step would be a demo and and see what people think, and then see what the next step is. Is what I thought we were gonna do. Yeah, if we're already at demo stage. That's exciting. Yeah, he's not working on it anymore. He he moved on to other things because he doesn't know what else to do with it. Oh wow! I'd love to see a demo, even if it's just a YouTube video of, of him with his crazy test environment. So, Ricky, is that something? Is that could that app know what version of Firefox OS or what kind of device it's installed on? Uh, I don't know. Because Michelle we was check. saying that could be a way, another another way around this problem on Firefox OS is if an installed help app knew what kind of device it was on. Yeah, but they would have to install an app to get support. Maybe it eventually comes pre-installed. Right. Ultimately, that that's would be the, the goal, awesome thing, right? right? Yeah. Right. If it's that super awesome, we just push for it to get on the phone top, right? Like I think with offline content and it could be one of those know. apps, just like so, calendar or email. Like it comes, you can't yeah. delete it. It's fully privileged. Yeah. Bundled. Yeah. Bundled app. Fully right. privileged web app. Yep. Th that's ultimately, I think, what we all want, right? Because <laughs> then just... it could do things like it could fix things. Like you're like, oh, yeah. dude, your Wi-Fi settings are borked. Click the button, yeah. we'll Ooh. fix them. Right. Oh yeah. So I mean, wh while everyone is here who is interested in that, Ricky, probably, why are you making uh, we can <laughs> we can maybe uh -oh. schedule a demo. <laughs> Maybe while everyone uh, is here, we can schedule a dem uh, time for the demo. Uh, so how about uh, maybe after the sprint planning meeting, Ricky? Uh, on Tuesday? Yeah. Um, I mean, sure. Like Who has to go? 9.30? Uh, so I heard Michelle. I assume you buy. I would love to just but, see. Uh, yeah, Michael, yeah I would okay? just like to lurk. I yeah. don't, because it's Firefox OS at this point. I'd like to see if I could, what we can do on Android in a similar fashion. Yeah, Ralph and so, Amina should come too. I mean, we can use this meeting. Say, we can use an existing meeting. We can use the mobile meeting on Wednesday. One of the mobile, yeah, the mobile meeting on Wednesday. Yeah, I think well, that that's probably would, the best. That makes sense. I would also like to participate. That's totally not. Possible for uh, it's at ten thirty. It's at ten thirty in the morning. It's not completely impossible, is it? They changed the change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the, we changed like it to ten thirty like because Hermina. No, no, a month ago when Hermina yeah. joined. Yeah. Oh, oh, I had no idea. Oh, well, sorry. yes. Okay. Now you know. Uh, I, I think you only yeah. missed a couple. Um, okay. Yeah. Wednesday. So next Wednesday. Wednesday mobile meeting day. Next Wednesday at 10 30? Pacific. Yeah, correct. I think that that's perfect. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, not a thing to solve in one meeting, but good to keep. That seems pretty productive with some ideas. So, anything? yeah, join us at the mobile meeting and maybe we can get more ideas from that demo. Yeah, cool. we have a few more days to think about it. <clears throat> Uh, is there yeah. an invite for the meeting? Could someone send me an invite for that meeting? Yeah. That would be nice. Thank you. There should be one. Whose meeting is that? Is that yours? Is that you sent out, Michelle? Because I, I can't yes. alter other people's meetings. Oh, the glory of calendars. Otherwise, no, I'd do it. No, I'll do it if you're not. I don't know why you wouldn't be on a Kadir, but maybe you're not. I'll make sure everybody's on it. OK. Give me an AI. Okay. Um, this next section. Yeah, so, in... what next steps do we have there? Okay. Sorry, Michelle's typing. We should also ask uh, for the bug, for the API bug. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, please. Let me see if I, I can, can do that. that. I can ask. Hold on. Or just get Kadir to get posted. Hold on. I got, it, I got it. I got it. Ah, uh, so quick. Okay. okay, here. Can I just read you this uh, number and you type it down so that I don't have to switch tabs and 
is what I'm looking at. Sure. Yeah, I got it. I got it. API bug. Go. 732. 732. 527. That's the bug number. 732. 5, 732. 5, 527. 527. Okay. 732. 527. I will yeah. put a real link in once I keep going. Thank I'll you. put a real link in once I've verified it's correct. Okay. Uh, Michelle, is this next piece in light blue? Did you write that? Yeah, I didn't know what this conversation was about, really. So I added this in just about version 1.1 1 .1, because the question was just sort of like, oh, how, do we handle, how do we handle yeah. changes in the OS? So since they're quarterly, that's nice. We'll just have a goal every quarter <laughs> where at the beginning of the quarter, we try to figure out what has changed. And by the end of the quarter, we try to have everything, all the changes localized. Um, so for Oh, that's good. It's better than six weeks. It's way better than six weeks. It's three times better than <laughs> six weeks. Uh, <laughs> so for this one, uh, for this first uh, update quarter, most of the changes are in messages, email, contacts, dialer, and browser. And it's a lot of things that, you know, will be dear to our hearts, like MMS and, you know, more attachments for emails and downloading music from your browser that you can listen to and, and like having a contacts list that pops up in the dialer when you start typing numbers and cool stuff like that. So it's about 40 use cases. They're in the spreadsheet that I linked there. Um, it's, I think, um, if it has CC next to it, then it's code complete. That spreadsheet has like a thousand use cases in it, but if the, only the first uh, approximately 40 use cases, I think, are implemented. I also have a list of a bug query about all the MMS. It's, I think it's mostly the MMS stuff. That was the big piece that landed was multimedia messages. And there's a little bit of like Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth a video to somebody else's phone. And so it's a lot of cool stuff better for content. Um, so um, it's Geek's phone tried to push a full update to 1.1 last week. They claim they did. It's not working yet, but um, they should have that working soon, uh, which will be great so that everyone who has the Geeks phone, all the contributors, and all of us will have the 1.1 on our Geeks I'm phone. I'm wondering if anyone is yeah. testing that. I, I installed that manually. It is horribly, horribly broken. So like you can't 1.1 on the Geeks phone. It works awesome uh, in here. OK, on the peak, you can't even uh, click links in the browser. It just doesn't work. I, yes, I've heard, I've heard from developers who try to do this, who aren't Firefox OS developers, that there's problems on the peak, and there's problems with some keyons. Oh, so okay. I don't do know. Do you think that's known also? Herminus told me that yesterday, that the guys in France know that the update's not. Uh, they, what I heard was they were not even able to update to 1.1. So Michael, did you flash that yourself, yeah, or did I... you get no, yeah. I flashed it myself. Okay, so this would be the the uh, you know over the air update that I was referring to. But nevertheless, a lot of people will be getting onto one dot one and finding out what the heck is there. Even though the Geeks phone builds are you know also again a little different than what we'll see on the commercial devices. So um, as as um, as volunteers and employees with if we use the over the air update to one dot one. To upgrade our geeks phones who do we report do we just open bugs what's our what's our volunteer what? our bugs our 1.1 bugs too do we just go to bugzilla search for it and then file it if we don't see it or do we yep. talk to chang or is there an email address or something yep. or? no look at the mobile meeting notes from yesterday um oh, actually okay. naoki put some information about exactly this question so it's a good question he, he said, keep filing those bugs. There's a lot of areas for improvement. If you think something is like um, a huge, you know, drop dead kind of a problem, nominate it as Leo plus um, or Leo question mark. And then um, also use the B2G blocking flag. 
Oh man. And okay. or if you have any concerns or questions, just ping me, okay? Say I see this thing and I don't know what to do, but it seems like a blocker. Oh, I see it here. I encourage you to keep filing bugs. Note to volunteers. Yep. Okay. Yep, do it. So so Michelle, maybe you can also answer this. Uh, which uh, operating system we should we be actually using? There is the 1.0, 1.1, and the nightly builds. Uh, so I started using nightly builds, but I'm not even sure if it that I'm, and I'm filing bugs against them, but I'm not even sure if that's a good idea. Oh, the nightly geeks phone builds. Yeah. Um, you can file bugs against nightly for sure. Just make sure that it's clear in the bug that that's your environment so that they know how to triage it. Yeah, I always put the build identifier in there too. So, okay. Uh, yeah, build ID I think is helpful too. But is that actually the thing that we should be testing, the uh, not least, or would it be better to test one of the others? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, my guess is most of us should be working at 1.1 when the upgrade comes over the air. <laughs> Guessing only. We should be. Okay, yeah, and I... also, the truth is, that's like in the bag. <laughs> so it's important. I'm, I'm saying it's important because of documentation, and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, but, but like 1.2 is well, pretty much well underway. Mm. Now, so I'm, for, I'm also... for us, like if you can get your your mitts on 1.2, but this is 1.2, it's really, um, I mean, it will come to the ZTEs and the Alcatel devices, um, but it will also be new devices. And so that's oh, the okay. LEO devices that, that Naoki mentioned we should try to get our hands on. So we're always going to be in this race as soon as we get, you know, a ZTE device, it'll be like, oh, now get yep. a LEO device. <laughs> yep. So yeah, we're, we're just in we always have to be one device ahead when we're running docs, right? Well, we're not as bad as, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, but but for testing, it's even, you know, we should be even further ahead. For docs, we're, we're okay, but for actual, what you're talking about, Kadir, to answer the question is, is we really, for testing purposes, Leo is where everything's happening right now, the Leo devices, and I don't, I don't have one yet. So. What, what is Leo? Maybe well, I'm that's something. a code name that we're yeah. going to keep using. Okay. That's for 1.1. Uh, uh, that's for 1.2. Oh. Uh, uh, no. Oh, no, that's, that is <laughs> one, 1.1. 1 .1. Sorry. Was that your question, Michael? No, no I have a different have question. So this is about documentation then. So, so two parts. 1.1, uh, 1 .1, which phones are going to get that, like, um, is that going to be only on some new phones or like is the ZTE and the Alcatel, are they going to get that before they get 1.2? They'll go to 1.1, then to 1.2? They will? Yep, they will get it. Okay, and then we have... But that will be up to, of course, the manufacturers to right. decide when, when they get it. So without some special about support API or in-product redirect magic or whatever, what's the current plan then for documentation do we just say look if you have this version here are the instructions and then another section like if you have this later version the, you have these instructions how if we have an idea well, that's, what to do that's one way that's one way to do it um in in every article that's different right um you know we could also just do one article that's a supplement that says Here's all the things, you know, everything still applies for 1.1. Here's one article that's everything for, I mean, 1.0. Here's everything for 1.1 that's been added. So go tell your carrier OEM to push your, your update to 1.1 if you don't have it yet because right. these are all the goodies that you'll get. I mean, that's, I've seen it done that way. I don't love the idea of a supplement, but it might be nice to have just one article to localize for everybody and, and have one article that just says, here's what's new for all of our early adopters. I mean, we, that's what we did for the tablet, at least for the time being. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So that occurred to me today. That's another way to sort of um, slice it. Also it. 
the yeah. impetus. It seems to me like the differences are rather minor. Uh, more like bug fixes, maybe. Or maybe I just didn't well, there's see some, big changes. Some things like I could also see, for instance, like MMS. Maybe there's an article about MMS with a note that says you have to have the latest version of Firefox OS to have this feature. If you don't, talk to your carrier, you know, or whatever. That's another right. thing, too, that you, we could do. For big features, yeah. Right. Yeah, for little things where, like, I don't know, the buttons in the email program are different. Yeah. Right, like, or there's some buttons in the messages program that are different. And, um, <clears throat> and then we'll have, of course, the addition of uh, device type. So then we'll update the places where we'd say, here's the supported devices. Cool. So there'll be a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm open to ideas about, you know, what's sort of the best way to do it um, without having, you know, proper show for. I think the best way is the separate article, like you guys just discussed. Um, you know what, this might now, be a good session. Yeah. I think, but with in combination with the new article for big things yeah. like MMS and yeah. then updates to articles for device, new devices. Yeah. That seems like a good, you know, yeah. sort of way. For to now, do. wait till yeah. 2.0 or whatever comes up next. And by then we'll have like 10 devices. We'll have a totally different problem. I mean, and part of it is, is like, and we'll have to see like how much fragmentation is there as we go forward. Does, does everyone pretty much go to the new device and we don't have to support 18 different versions or, you know, but that's all like nobody knows, right? That's a, right. We'll see. We don't expect, I mean, I don't think we expect people to, to update. I think we, my expectation is that people don't update, but um, but we'll have to see. You know, because it's a 1.0, maybe that's crazy. Maybe everyone will, right. you know, update. Yeah, because everyone at 1.0 is an early adopter. Yeah, they know what they're dealing with. I mean, we can see in the feedback already, people are being super kind because they know. Right. <laughs> right, they know they're the I first. mean, 1.1 is so much better already than 1.0. Like, oh, yeah. That's why I flashed it myself. I was like, I can't wait. Come on. I want the new <laughs> stuff on here. I'm waiting. <laughs> right. Right, me too. Okay. Thanks. That's helpful. Cool. Let me take right down what we said. Um all right. Anything else about uh about this big <laughs> long topic of supporting people on all different kinds of versions of things? Um if not, I just had this question about locale leaders. It looks like somebody answered that. Um, yeah. And Rosanna, I'll find the name of the person I talked to the other day. Ari something very long Indian was trying to delete documents and yes. didn't have permission to do it. And I did it for them. Right. I, I yeah. Perfect. I think he's, he's helping right now with the mobile team, right? I think he has done a bunch so. of things for Firefox OS um, and also localizing. Yeah. These were Firefox OS documents that were like mm -hmm. messed up or yeah. you didn't want or something. Yeah. Were he's in the reviewers group and in the um he, he's an uh, he's a he's a reviewer and uh i think he's in the research group right oh but he's not a locale leader no he's not yet oh, a well locale then... leader. he's i think he's pretty new to sumo okay then it wasn't a problem he was okay. just asking me and i said i thought they do i thought he was a, a locale leader and was like how come i can't delete these things okay Mr. Okay, Sal. I'll check the, the, uh, his locale leader. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Okay. And then who wrote, is this Kadir, voting on bugs to influence the development? Who wrote yeah, that? actually, this is something uh, I wanted to discuss here before I open this up in the forums. Uh, but the MDN team has been experimenting lately with something that is called TMDN Drivers, which is a group that is um, driving MDN development. So for them, it's a little bit different because they also are operating with other uh, uh, entities outside of their own group, like for example, Persona has their documentation there, or Firefox has their documentation there. So they, they uh, have uh, needs from the platform uh, that that um, the platform just has to provide. Um, so for us, it's a little bit different. Um, but what we can do is, and what what they or so what they do is, they also have community participation. 
in uh, voting on uh, what should be worked on next. So this is formal voting, actually. What they do is they use Bugzilla as the uh, known tool. And uh, you can vote on things uh, so that uh, it, it influences the, the roadmap, so to say. In our case, what I would like to do is, because um, there is a lot of overhead with the MVN drivers program, what we can do is we can, uh, what, what I would like to see is, what is the most pressing thing for uh, people who are uh, contributing to Sumo? Um, what is the thing that we should be working on next? And votes can be a very strong indicator for that. Doesn't mean, um, I don't personally think that votes should be the only thing to go by. Uh, it can be misleading, and uh, there are other things that, that uh, might have actually precedence. But it would be a great way to formalize um, uh, the participation process, I think. Uh, if you can vote on things, if 10, 20, 30 contributors vote on a certain bug, that actually tells me as the product manager, yes, this is something that I should be looking at. Uh, forum discussions are also important, but it can, like, like happens that uh, forum discussions get so long that people don't want to participate in them anymore or can't, can't because they feel like they have to read everything up until then. And this will be a lightweight uh, process for them, for, for everyone who is uh, using the product to also vote on what's important to him or herself. And uh, we can then use that as indicators for what to put into the next sprint uh, or the one after that. So I'm proposing this here. I would like to put that uh, out there into the forums to then uh, just start start uh, collecting votes on uh, on Baxilla. I guess my only um, cautious thing is that if we say this, people will expect the votes to lead to fixes. Yeah, I the think that's high number important. of votes. Right, I think that's an important uh, expectation to manage. Uh, it's important uh, that we know that it, it we won't implement live chat because 15 people have voted for it and it's the most voted. Or but any other random or feature. Or any other yes. Uh, so this or is random not about bug. That. Right, but this is an indicator. So it makes it easier for me as the product manager to see which one of the 500 bugs that we are that are currently open uh, are also important to community members and people who use the platform. Uh, yeah, that so sometimes can be hard to tell uh, because so as people as you, don't. Um, as long yeah, as so you communicate that expectation. Good point. I think that's um, a good because point. Um, I, and, and I think this is manageable in the context of Kitsune. It's definitely not manageable in the context of Firefox for Android, Firefox OS, or Firefox for desktop. We already the votes are already being ignored there uh, because there's just too many bugs and it's impossible to triage. But I think for Kitsune is where you're talking about only here, right? Definitely we can manage this and communicate this properly. Yeah, I think our community is fairly uh, well. Well, we we have a good overview of our community, um, so it's it's and not boundless. Yes, yeah. and the box. It's not boundless uh, with Firefox. It's essentially any Firefox user coming in and voting. So we don't have that. We have uh, users of our okay. platform, contributors, uh, who would be participating in this process. Uh, so yeah, I, it would be a good indicator, I think. Yeah, Michael, you wanted to say something? Um, so a couple of things. So um, yeah, I mean, I guess as long as it's a piece of the thing, I was I'm mm -hmm. wondering, though, like if I mean, in areas where there are lots of contributors, like for instance, if localizers organized and voted on things, they would always outnumber everyone. And then bugs for localizations would always have the most votes or something, you know? Yeah. Um, just because there's a lot of darn localizers. Um, that doesn't mean that's, I mean, in one aspect, yes, that affects a lot of people, so those should get fixed. But, um, so there are bugs that are like for contributors and then there are bugs that are like for users. And um, are we talking about voting on all kinds of bugs? Yeah, absolutely. Sumo bugs? Uh, but I will, yes, absolutely. But I'm assuming that, I mean, it does make sense to restrict that to a subset of what we have there. It will be really hard to enforce anyway. Right. Um, 
But what I can, what I, what I'm assuming, and what has happened actually on the MDN side is that people vote on things that are important to themselves. Um, so I'm okay. using the forum, and actually I run into this problem all the time. I'm going to vote on that bug that is already filed. Right. Um, and now that it has an effect that actually people are looking at it, it would also hopefully get people uh, to to be more engaged. Because what I'm seeing in the forums is that very few people are actually in, in, in uh, engaged in discussions. Uh, that might also be because it's, it's hard to see where they are going and it's hard to keep up with those. Uh, but it's still important to get feedback from contributors. I don't want to uh, work. I don't want us to work on things that no one cares about or that only one or two people care about. So it's important to be the, the limited time that we have. I would like to allocate that to things that are also important to contributors. Hey, just a note that the last five minutes or so of this meeting is not in the recording because my hard drive ran out of space and I had to <laughs> um, copy and over our recording to another hard drive before uh, I run out of hard drive space on my startup Sorry. disk here. That sounds like um, a roll-in kind of mistake. Love it. <laughs> guys, I, I need to leave to another meeting. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Um, have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye, Rosanna. Fun. Bye, Rosanna. Bye. So, Cool. Uh, that was the last thing on here, I, or I didn't want to cut off discussion on that. I just wanted to be just saying that, but we are at like 59 after. Right. Yeah, but I think those are good points. Managing expectations for this, I think, is the most important thing. Um, just say it's most, a component. It's a yes, component exactly. of your decision-making process, and your meetings are open, right? So if people want to come to them to to engage you in the other components of the decision-making process, they're open as well, right? Well, this is the meeting. This is the KV right, platform. Is, yeah, yeah. So this is the platform place meeting. You, yeah, exactly. So the platform meeting, the etherpads, and voting, those are your tools to influence Kitsune development. Just make it clear that the vote is not the only tool. It's not the only component of the... And, and I hate to say this, but you have to sort of communicate that you're making arbitrary decisions. Although, with taking into account all... You and Ricky are making arbitrary decisions to take into account all components of the decision-making process. I know we can't say that, but, you know. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, that's true. Uh, hopefully, it's not too arbitrary. Hopefully, it is based on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you, you, with data, the, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah, but, it's, so to a certain extent, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, I will make sure to manage expectations for that. Thanks for pointing that out. I think that's really important. Alrighty. Anything else? Right. While we're nope. still here? Cool. All right. It was a great meeting. Let's call Thanks it a meeting. Michael. That was a good meeting. Okay, Kadir, Yay. can we meet good in my meeting. room? Yeah. <laughs> Kadir, I'll see you in my room. All right. Ciao. Okay. Bye. 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 Thunderclap. <laughs>